What's going on, Tribe? Happy Black History Month. My name is Nicole. And my name is Kia, and we are the co-owners of Glamourina. Glamourina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired activewear intentionally designed to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space in health and wellness where every body belongs. Yes, and welcome to Behind Glamourina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss how we balance being successful Black women entrepreneurs, working nine to five jobs, motherhood, self-care, and everything in between. Definitely. And we always like to do a mental health check-in every episode. Mm -hmm. So before we dive into today's topic, let's go ahead and do that. Kia, how are you feeling today? Yes, um, I am feeling pretty good. I'm over the cold weather already and just patiently waiting for the spring um, because I prefer prefer to be a little bit warmer outside. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm there. I'm cold. <laughs> I'm cold and I'm tired of being cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think a lot of people, especially, you know, on the East Coast are feeling cold. They, they can't, I'm sure yes. people can relate. Yeah, um, definitely. How about you? How are you yeah. feeling, Nicole? <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling okay. I mean, it, 2023 has been a rocky year so far for me. It's, every week is up and down, but mm -hmm. this today I am feeling okay. So I can't complain. I'm blessed. I'm here. Yep, I'm amen. making it. So yes. Amen. All right. Well, in today's episode of Behind Glam Marina, Moms on a Mission, we're going to be talking about dating and motherhood. Um, we're going to kind of dive into since um, it's actually the day after Valentine's Day. So, you know, many of you guys may have all kinds of plans. So regardless if it was staying in, going out on a date, if you're dating, if you're not, you're dating yourself, you know, there's so many different options. So mm -hmm. we want to start by saying there's no right way to be dating. We're just talking about dating in and of itself, dating and motherhood, and just um, diving a little bit deeper into that topic. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, this, this podcast is, especially this episode is more geared towards the moms because mm -hmm. sometimes when you have a child or children, and then you, you know, that that doesn't work out with your kid's dad or something like that. You have to get back out there eventually, you know, however long it takes you, if it's soon, if it takes a while, whatever, you know, you have to get back out there eventually. I think that's a part of self-care. If you ask me, dating is a part of um, fulfillment in life. So the first part of this discussion is like, have you seen your perspective of dating change when you had a child? So when you were first, before you had a child, you probably were out there dating. You probably was dating for fun. You might've been younger or your, your intentions for dating may have been different than when you have your child. Right. Um, so for me recently trying to get back out there, I'm, I'm thinking through it. I, I, I know the perspective is changing because you have a kid, you're responsible for someone. And I think you right. have to take that into consideration when you're looking for a partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, does your perspective of dating change? Absolutely. Before my daughter, I think, plus, you know, I was younger. Mm -hmm. So again, we just want to emphasize whatever works for you guys. Do you, we just sharing our, <laughs> we just sharing our um, experiences and perspective, but um, yeah, I think younger dating, not necessarily pressed on um, for me pressed on, like I need to get married or have kids. Um I mean, I want to say going back, say as, as far as college, because that's mm -hmm. probably when I really start having my first like serious boyfriend. Yeah, the dating is different. It's just going out, it's just enjoying each other, it's having fun, seeing where it goes, mm -hmm. hoping that it goes, going through the breakups, because I feel like, you know, high school, college, you date, you break up. Not everybody. Some people mm -hmm. still with their high school sweetheart. I don't know how people yeah. have done that, but, um, but yeah. So after, after having my daughter, um, because you know, we're not married, you and I aren't, aren't married right now. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, my situation went to the co-parenting situation pretty, as soon as Layla popped out, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it turned to co-parenting, went from dating to co-parenting. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, having, 
the baby and having a young child, having someone to take care of. And then when I was ready to really go back out and date, um, it's a lot. It's a lot that goes into that. You know, I don't know how much you've experienced, but you have to think about childcare. Mm-hmm. If, if dad can't watch child at the time, you have to think about that. There's so many aspects. It's not the same. You know, you got it's somebody not, dependent on you, right? Yeah, it's definitely not the same. I think most women out there can agree that it's definitely yeah. different no matter what the difference is. And I think that kind of leads into the next part of the discussion is, you know, balancing dating and motherhood, like ta- um, time allocation. Like you said, are mm-hmm. you, do you have time for it? And then <laughs> your mom guilt. This is a big one. I, I saw this topic in this Oprah article, it's mom guilt and dating. So I think mm-hmm. that goes hand in hand with the the time allocation and um, balancing everything. Right. So it's like, you know, you, you want to have time for that personal adult life and that should be okay. You shouldn't feel guilty because you're going on a date. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't feel like, oh, I'm leaving my baby. <laughs> um, especially for the moms with the small kids. You know, you know, when yeah. your child is under one or under two, you probably really feel that mom guilt. So yeah, I, I think that's real. And I think that we should allow ourselves to feel okay about, you know, having that dating time and making that dating time. Yeah, I think just with what you're saying right now in terms of if you're a mom with a small child and you're ready, kind of ready to get back out there or start dating again, um, there's a lot of like societal pressures, I feel like, of how, you know, well, you just had a baby. Like you need to be in the house. You need to be in the house mm-hmm. with the baby. So I don't know. It's uh, just, this is kind of a touchy subject because it's it varies for everybody. Um, but I just feel like, if the baby is safe, you know, if you have a safe um, person that you trust that can watch your child, I'm not saying baby, but whatever age, whatever <laughs> mm-hmm. age that you have a child and you're ready to start dating again. Um, I feel like as long as the child is in a safe space and you trust that person, you once if you feel good about that part, I feel like it should make um, the mommy gill ease up a little. Yeah, it should lessen that a little bit. (laughs) I I agree. And I think I will say, because some people may chime in and say, well, some women abuse it, right? Some people are with others (laughs) more than they're with their kid. And and I I do think that's real. And I think we should take that into consideration. But as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do as a mom, your child is well taken care of, why not? But, you know, again, there are women who drop their child off in in the grandparents right, every sees, weekend <laughs> right the grandparent sees the child more than them or every the baby exactly so i mean i think it, it's just a balancing right just uh-huh. just don't overdo either or <laughs> like right time for both yeah absolutely i feel like because again you mentioned about the mommy guilt um so it's almost motherhood and dating starts with giving yourself permission to date and blocking out the mommy guilt or anything like that, as long as, and this again, this is our suggestions, as long as you feel like your child is safe and you, they're with a trusted person. And we also don't encourage this doing this every other day or every yeah. weekend, you know, because, you know, obviously if it gets a, a bit excessive, that's not good. But, yeah. you know, we're just talking about regular dating you're, you're ready to get out there right you're ready to um start dating either the child's father husband or somebody new mm-hmm. and so we, we we're just talking about dating and motherhood and definitely starting off with letting go of the mommy guilt and giving yourself permission to date definitely mm-hmm. and, and that actually goes into the next topic same from this uh, oprah article mom shaming Mm. comments people make about a mother's perceived parenting fails people's unsolicited Mm. judgment on your new dating life so once you've gotten back out there i'm just Mm -hmm. i I really would like to know i'm sure it's a lot like how many women out there have had that where it's unsolicited you're not asking for people's opinion about what you're doing how you're dating your lifestyle but they chime yeah. in or they give you the looks <laughs> trying to, you know, try to look down upon you really. It's mom shaming. So uh-huh. have you ever experienced that? Do you know anyone who's experienced that? Mm. Yeah. I feel like most of us probably have. Um, I know in terms of my experience, for sure. I experienced, I definitely, you know, I'm trying to think who I want to say. Not so much, not really family, but you know, a couple family members, <laughs> I had some comments um, when I was thinking I had my daughter 
And she probably was like six months old. And I was in my head already starting to plan. Mm-hmm. It's like a weekend away because mm-hmm. it was getting tough. And I just I think I was imagining like, oh, I just really want to get away. Yeah. And I definitely had, you know, my mom stepped in and was just like, you know, you can't be planning a trip when you have a baby. <laughs> you just had a baby. So th- obviously, I think um, older women in our lives, you know, what I mean, I feel like they might sometimes be the first ones yeah. because of just how it used to be, you know, in our older generations previous to ours. It's like you stayed in the house. You weren't, mm-hmm. you know, women weren't really going out like that. But um, times are so different now where women are working more or they might choose to still have a social life even yeah. after they've had a child. So, yeah, I yeah. definitely I, I <laughs> agree. I, think, you. I, I don't I haven't really gotten out there, to be honest, yet. So mm-hmm. um, I haven't had that, haven't experienced that that judgment. Yeah. But I, I do think you're right in a sense that a lot of older women um, but sometimes not even older women, sometimes people who are just not in that situation, situation at that time. Yeah. I was going to say, though, they don't even have kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if it were them, the shoe was on the other foot, right. They don't know what they would do or, or, mm-hmm. you know, but they're quick to judge. So I think that mm-hmm. kind of plays hand in hand with mom guilt and mom shaming, because these women out here who are mom shaming are adding to your guilt, making you feel guiltier about what you're yeah. doing when self-care is just real. I, I really do think, um, life is about balance no matter what. So if, if your right. child is six months and you're ready and you just need that adult time, why not? What's wrong with it? Like, uh-huh. I think people should stop doing that. I mean, that's just shaming in general, right? So yeah. much shaming out yes. here where people want to chime in and, and have an opinion on what somebody else is doing. Mm-hmm. It just needs to stop. <laughs> Cause it just, it yeah. tears, it's like tearing other women down and, and let's, let's not do that. Yeah, like, definitely. Let's not do that. Um, it does need to stop. And the fact that we can't um, change how, like what other people do or say, I think that when you, again, decide that you're ready to start dating or you're out here dating and you're a mom, um, you really have to block out that noise. Again, like if you feel secure in what you're doing, that's my belief. If you so feel secure and you're like, you know, I'm ready to be out here dating. I want to do this. Um, whatever other people might say about yeah. what you should, how long you should be, because there's uh, that goes into like how long you should be dating. I don't even know if this is on here, how long you should be dating someone before you introduce them to your kids. I would love if you're listening to this mm-hmm. if you're, and you're ready, if you're able to comment, especially on YouTube in the comments, man, please give us your opinion. Like what, um, what's your idea of being ready to, um, how long you should be dating somebody until uh, they, you introduce them to your kids. So you'll have to think about that because everybody has their own opinion, but I would love to hear uh, the viewers views and opinions about that too. Same, same. Definitely <laughs> chime in for the, for the people watching on YouTube, definitely chime in because yes. I think all of us will want, just want to know, like see what, you know, where the, the popular opinion lies. Right. Um, but that's definitely here. Um, but before before we get into um, like introducing to the kids or when that time is right, mm-hmm. what about when you go on a date and you tell your prospective date you have a child? Like, are you doing that on the first date? Are you waiting a couple mm-hmm. of dates in? When is the perfect time? Yes. Um, you know, some people are like, especially if you're out there like dating for something serious, I think most people yeah. will probably do it on the first date. Right. So yeah. I guess it depends on what you're dating for. True. What your goals are with dating, but that's true. Because if it's just to have fun, you know, they don't need to know all that, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so you're right. That makes a difference. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. I'm, I haven't really thought much about it, but I do think it just depends on your goals. I mean, mm-hmm. at the yeah, time, absolutely. From in my experience, you know, I definitely went through. Um, a period of dating online. So I would love to see other people, hear other people's opinions on that. I mean, we could seriously have a girl chat because I have two other girlfriends that um, are dating, uh, using the dating apps and the stories and mine too. I mean, I tell you, for me, it was very different because I I met someone and we dated like all summer. My first one, a lot of people, it's a, a different experience for everybody. But sometimes you meet and it's like, nope, that's not right. And you keep <laughs> on, you know, but I felt like I got lucky. I met somebody, but um, 
I'm pretty sure I, I can't remember if he said, I think he did say he has a child in his profile. So, okay. like, you know, dating on an app, you get a little bit of like a synopsis or whatever of the person by reading their profiles compared to date meeting someone say out at the grocery store or whatever mm -hmm. right away. Obviously you're not like, okay, do you have kids? It's, it's until the first date, but, uh, um, yeah. but yeah, I think I did not, <laughs> which is interesting. I did not put that I had a child on my, my profile and I, I wonder why because I've had people ask me, how come you didn't disclose that you have mm -hmm. a child? I didn't, and I didn't have a picture of my daughter with me in my profile, but I had, there was a picture of her and I were holding hands. So I just cut her off, but you can kind of <laughs> see it. And it's interesting because on the first date, the guy asked me, did you purposefully, so he must have like really been paying attention. He's right. like, Pur purposefully have your child kind of in the picture, but cut out to let people know that you're a mom. So it's weird, That's but you know, for me personally, I do, even if I didn't have it in my profile, it was going to come out on the first date. It just, it just has to, because for me as a working mom at co-parents and stuff, I, for me to be able to date, like I'm not readily available all the time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Part, yeah. Yeah. When you have kids, like your schedule is not open the way it is if you don't have children. It's a lot of planning and yeah. moving stuff around that goes into go to getting ready for a date. And if yeah. it's because you're a child, right? So yeah. I just don't know how people could date if they were thinking about something serious without mentioning anything about their kids yeah and then it's almost like even if you're if you think about it even if you're dating for fun right and then it right. turns into something serious because you didn't expect it mm -hmm. then it's almost like you were you were withholding you were withholding information right so yeah, it's like oh, like why well, would you lie about that right like a month this later oh, never, i didn't know you had a <laughs> <laughs> you have a child it's just such a big thing it's this is not like you know oh i don't know you didn't have a car or, or you don't drive mm -hmm. you don't have a license or something like that i don't know but how, being a parent or like you have children or you have a child that'd just be a big shocker yeah not for me personally like <laughs> like you said regardless if you're dating um to, for something serious or just to have fun Oops. yeah but no that makes sense for somebody thinking about you know getting back out there it's like you're right like you you kind of have to let them know because you're not going to always be available and mm -hmm. so you don't want it to seem like especially if you think that you, you like them or whatever you don't want to seem like you're blowing them off like oh can't go today oh can't go that day exactly because that will happen right and now you know, work. Oh, they'll know why work. they'll have an idea oh. why so i think that's for the most part, I just feel like you should just disclose it. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, right. unless you just know that, look at this person, you're like, absolutely not. This is the one and done. That's true. <laughs> like, we're going to finish this coffee and I'm, I'm out of here or we're going to finish yeah. this drink. I, I'm done. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. So I, all of these kind of lead into one another, but the next topic is screening potential partners. So mm. it's, it's kind of like, what are red flags? And that's something I haven't even thought about. What are red flags in, in this day and age in dating? And I know dating apps, they're probably different red flags than mm. <laughs> <laughs> in person. Yeah. Um, but I'll say for one of my friends who has been on the, the Hinge app, I think it's Hinge. Mm -hmm. She's dated like relentlessly on there um, and nothing has worked. <laughs> but I think one guy just kind of like got straight to like the sex talk, sending her wild pictures and like instantly. Oh gosh, and I'm like, I'm, I said, no, it's, it's, that's a red flag. Yes. It's a red flag. I don't care if you're vulnerable because it's been a long time. I, it's, it's not going to lead to anything good in my, in my opinion. Exactly. Unless that's what you are, are dating for. Mm -hmm. If you're dating to hook up, right. Then that's perfect. <laughs> but if yeah. you're dating, you know, to, to, to date, um, uh, and to kind of get to know somebody and stuff like that, like why are, jump so fast? Yeah, to that, you know. What yeah, I mean? it's almost given. This is what you're on this this app for, and how many other exactly. people are you doing and, this with? Yeah, <laughs> and he, whoever that guy was, that's what he's looking for. He's also just letting you know right off the bat, this is what I want. True. I don't true. want anything serious. I'm on here for this. Are you? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is important, I think, because it's like, at least you know his expectations up front. Mm -hmm. it, he's not hiding it. And I, I guess I have to commend him for that. <laughs> true. <laughs> exactly. Just put himself out there. <laughs> 
Full yeah. transparency. Full <laughs> transparency. That's hilarious. Yeah, I think for one of my red flags, um, I had a guy I started dating. Hmm. He cried on the second date. And this could he be cried. a whole other topic. He cried about something. It's like the second or the third date. And I, I don't know. We, I think we were disagreeing on something like that. I forgot exactly what it was. <laughs> or it was just, I think I remember. I was telling him, like, I want us to slow down. because So it was, it was almost, almost two red flags bundled together. <laughs> because <laughs> he right away started talking about moving in. Um, and what it would okay. be like, like us living together. And again... When you have a child, and he has children, but when you have a child as a mother, mm -hmm. like, whoa. Now, right. if I didn't have any kids, and maybe if I was younger and just like, all right, well, my lease is about to end and we're in love, <laughs> let's move it. People do that. Date, date number two? Work. I, was it date number two? Uh, I've, it was like maybe three, maybe date number three. Because we went on official early. dates, but then I also would see him at the gym. So okay. I would see him and stuff, and we were talking stuff at the gym. But the actual dates, yeah. it No, way too early to be talking <laughs> about moving in. For me, for my age, and just because, again, I'm a mom. Yeah. Um, I think that was a little bit crazy. So from there, when I began to tell him, I feel like that's too soon, and like kind of slowed down, I think that's when he cried. So... I'm sorry, that is I so think, crazy. Girl. I think he felt like... Cause he cried other times later on before mm. we finally ended it. And I feel like he thought crying was like a way, like I would look at it and say, Oh, you're so sensitive. And like, just so Got open it. and understanding. But for me, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a man crying. I, I, I respect that. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it depends on what you're crying about. And if you're crying about very small and significant things, that seems yeah. a little immature, a little childish. Like, why are you crying? Yeah, it's given <laughs> emotionally unstable, and I'm not looking for that right now <laughs> in my life. Right. Um, but yeah, it's I, I would say that is a red flag. Stable. That is a mm -hmm. red flag because it's almost like things are new. You're trying to get to know me, mm -hmm. but you're showing, it's like you're showing this side too much too soon. And it's, yeah, Ooh. I want to move in and the, the crying, getting a little bit upset and, and wanting to say, I love you. It was all of it was just, you're moving so fast. So yeah. I think that's probably my biggest red flag is when they appear to be moving too fast. Like I, I you know, again, it's your own personal beliefs. Like how long should you be dating someone before introducing kids? And if you guys are possibly thinking about moving in together, like if you meet somebody and you're so in love, mm -hmm. you want to run away together. Hey, we're not here to judge you. Like if you only date right. three, six months and you're like, we're ready to get married. Cause I knew a couple, she wasn't a mom though, but <laughs> she did get married after six months. So I don't know if she had a child, if that would have changed. But yeah. I just, you know, I think you, everybody kind of has a gauge in their own system, their own beliefs of how long you probably should be dating someone. And everyone gets that feeling of if it's going too fast, like yeah. we all know, you know, I mean, whatever it looks, that looks like for you, we all know what it's moving too fast means for you. <laughs> yeah. And I think every, probably every person, but definitely every woman, you have this intuition, you know, yes. if something's given red flag or you know something's <laughs> not quite right and it's just up to um, you to listen because i yeah, know a lot i know me so personally i've i've kind of felt an intuition before and then not and kind of ignored it it's like it's okay but then it comes it's like girl you should listen you should have listened mm -hmm. um <laughs> should listen <laughs> but yeah no i mean you know when you know you know exactly um, so mm -hmm. Yeah, that it's a lot. It's a lot um, being a mom and dating um, mm -hmm. and trying to avoid BS and, and all those types of things. But yeah. um, I think this episode was important just for women, mothers to kind of be able to relate to us on a different level to get our opinion on dating as moms, especially because we're busy. We work nine to five jobs. We have this business we're running and it's kind of like dating. Mm -hmm. It's another job. Um, but we have to pay yeah. special attention also because it's like, you know, we don't really need anybody wasting our time. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yes. 
So it's, it's definitely an important topic. We wanted to kind of get out there and kind of gauge and see where people are with dating and balancing motherhood at the same time. Absolutely. And I feel like, like we mentioned earlier, if you're watching this on YouTube, the replay crew, replay crew is what they always call it. Um, if you're watching this, like definitely comment, please. You're welcome to share your experience. I would love to have this conversation again with some more ladies. Um, cause this is a huge one, you know, being moms yeah. is one and then dating is a whole nother layer. Right. Yeah. So we're just here though. Um, Nicole and I just given our, our perspective, you know, my experience, her experience in terms of navigating Navigating dating and being moms and just taking them. Um, we got some questions and some topics from an Oprah article that Nicole found and just kind of taking a deeper dive. And so what, what does that look like? What's dating look like for you? What are some of the red flags? Yeah. You know, I've heard some crazy stories. So I, I would love to hear what you guys, <laughs> the viewers think yeah. some of the red flags of dating. Um, yeah. And then now I'm jumping into um, talking to your kids about dating, you know what I mean? And, and what, What's that like <laughs> for you? So, yeah, I think it's like talking to your kids about you dating. So say yeah. if you haven't or yes. your child doesn't know, you know, know you for dating or whatever, it's kind of like, how do you sit your child down and be like, okay, you know, I'm dating. This is, this is, <laughs> I want to go out on dates every once yeah. in a while. Like, how do you yeah. kind of break that down to them so that they know you're not neglecting them. You know, your life is changing mm-hmm. a little bit, but they still matter. I think it's important right. um, to find that balance and to make sure you, your child is okay. <laughs> and not mm-hmm. like, Oh, mommy's going out again, you know? Um, <laughs> so just kind of having that talk to, so to prepare them into, especially if you're on the verge of introducing them to somebody. Yeah, I agree. I think um, you definitely should talk to your kids about, any changes happening in the home, right. Or in your life. Um, and you don't obviously have to go into details. I think it obviously depends on how old the child is. You yeah. know, I feel like for, cause we don't, we're not parents of teenagers just yet, but, um, if you have a teenager, they're obviously able to handle, they, they know what dating yeah. stuff is, but I still think respecting their kids and kind of letting them know, you know, um, now if they're little, my daughter's eight, when I was dating, you know, I was dating, several years throughout her life, but maybe when she was about five, six, I think I would just say a friend when Mm. I finally did introduce, um, someone to her, you know, it was Mr. You know, this is mommy's friend Mm -hmm. because for her age, obviously I didn't need to go into super details, but sometimes I would say like, we're going to get some dinner. Um, we might go watch a movie, Mm -hmm. like little stuff like that. Just kind of letting her, um, be aware, yeah. that, you know, why I'm leaving. I'm not just leaving all the time or not all the time, but <laughs> I'm not just, le- just leaving um, to kind of give her an idea of like, where am I? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's important. I mean, I, d- I definitely think you need to have a strategy of some sort to, to, like you said, making uh-huh. your child aware of just kind of everything that's going on in a household and not right. just leaving them in the blind. I think open communication <laughs> is healthy, um, even yeah. when it comes to um, talking to your kids. So, right. 100%. Yep. Um, yeah. So now this is good. And I, I think the last topic, which I feel like we kind of may have addressed, mm-hmm. like when do you introduce your, your child to mm-hmm. the person that you're dating? But I guess you'll know. <laughs> yeah. When you know that person is is the person, then yeah, you know, you'll, mm-hmm. you'll know when, or even if it's just a good friend that you feel like, you know, this person is, I trust this person to be around, then you'll know. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, some people might have a belief, like, doesn't, why does it matter? And I would say from, as a teacher and a child advocate, um, the one thing that people just are, are weary or cautious about is that, um, your children meeting too many different, different kinds of people coming mm-hmm. into your home. is confusing. It's confusing for kids, especially young kids. Um, they, you know, someone's coming in and out and it's not consistent. Children love routine. They love consistency. Um, yeah. And when stuff is not like that, again, for young kids, because I'm more of an elementary background, they um, it can make them feel nervous or anxious. You know what I mean? So while that the guys that you're dating may be the best mm-hmm. and so sweet and so nice, but if they come on a Sunday, you guys have this Sunday dinner and then you know, little Susie doesn't see him anymore that, um, and then she sees somebody else. And then that person, 
only comes for a little bit. She, you're, she's developing this idea that men just come and go. Yeah. So you really, when you're dating, it is important to have conversations and be thoughtful and mindful of your child because, um, you know, it's for their mental state. I mean, and they're developing ideas about relationships, yeah. um, watching you. So you don't want daughter or son to have this belief that men don't stay Mm-hmm. Or, you know, um, cause it has nothing to do with you being a hoe, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it ain't nothing to do with that. Cause I think sometimes people assume like, oh, they just constantly commenting on who I'm dating. Cause they yeah. think I'm sleeping around. I ain't sleeping around. It's not about that. It's if you, once you have a child, it's no longer, life is no longer about you. Right. You know what I mean? So we gotta be honest about that. It's no longer about you anymore. And, um, and you just don't want to have the kids being scared either. Yeah. You know what I mean? You made a good point about just inconsistencies because mm-hmm. like you said, it could be dating them, seeing different men, but it could be, you know, what if you don't have a stable home and you're moving from place to place to place? That's another yes. inconsistency in a child's life that'll throw them off later in life. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, I think when, when it comes to dating and introducing them to a person, just be selective mm-hmm. because right. that inconsistency, I like that word because that's, that's the key that kind of messes them up for the future. It's like, yeah, oh, I'm just, you know, it's this and that and this and that. It's just their yeah. mind is like, what is happening? Right. They won't know how to be stable, how to make things stable. Stability, like yeah. you're saying, that inconsistency leads to instability. And mm-hmm. so we're trying, our job as parents are, is to, um, you know, help them grow and learn how to you know, cope in the world. Yeah. And, and you just, you know, you want to have, give them all the best skills that we can while, while they're young and still learning so yeah we were just cautious um we would just warn date have fun yeah we encourage mothers to go out and date again whether you're dating dad you know children's father um someone new you're Mm -hmm. hopping on the dating apps or um you know going on a a blind date or you're kind of redating your husband you know Mm -hmm. however you're going and deciding to jump back into dating after having kids or or maybe you took a break you know, um, from dating or your divorce, whatever it is, your this conversation is like, what's like, what is it like to start dating again? And, um, we're all about have fun and do, and do you boo, no judgment, (laughs) no judgment here, but definitely, you know, we, we went over a lot of different topics and again, we would love to hear, um, the viewer's perspective, you know, you might be like, I'm going to introduce my kids, you know, after, after 30 days, (laughs) me, I, I think I did at least six months. Okay. You know, some people do a, a year, some people it 45 days. So, you know, I wonder really what's, what's the gauge? Like what, what yeah. do you guys, um, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. And, and I, for me, it's been never so far. So <laughs> <laughs> when that time comes, we'll see. Yeah. But I just, like I said, you'll, you'll feel it. I think you'll yes. feel it. That intuition will let you know mm-hmm. if it's time or not. Mm -hmm. um but yeah i really enjoyed this episode i it gives me a lot of insight or just makes me think you know when it comes to dating and and all the things that you need to think you think need to think about as a um yeah as a mother so yes whether you see this on youtube if you see a clip on instagram chime in we can't wait to see what you're saying what your thoughts (laughs) are on this topic yeah um i don't know did you want to say anything else about these topics before we wrap up no, nope, I think that's all good. Like, like I said earlier, hopefully um, in future episodes, we'll be able to have some of the ladies share their experiences yes. also in terms of um, dating and being moms and running a business. For so sure. It's all good. For sure. Thank you guys so much for tuning into yes, thank this you. episode of Behind Glam Marina, Moms on a Mission. We have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Yep. Be sure to visit Glamarina.com to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough. Stay well. And until next episode, bye.